What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and I want to get right into this one because this is an important story, but I want to remind everyone we're going to have four, maybe even five videos on the channel today. Don't rely on your notifications. Just come back and check the channel out. I usually update every two to three hours. Lots to cover. So if you've been following the Chris Reagan and Colin Moriarty story, you know what's up. But if you've missed it already, essentially, these two host a video game podcast and they had originally been approved for and scheduled at PAX West to host a panel, essentially to have their podcast occur live at the convention. That panel was then canceled with no explanation why, including multiple emails from Colin Moriarty to PAX West officials demanding an explanation publicly asking what is going on, why can't the users, why can't the people that bought tickets to PAX get a refund? Ultimately, Colin Moriarty had then publicly offered to refund his own viewers, fans of the show, who had purchased tickets to PAX only to see their show after finding out they had been essentially deplatformed. Now, with no word from PAX, finally video game news website Kotaku pulls up uh, and wants to cover it, but it is, of course, only to push their own ridiculous narrative about both Chris Reagan and Colin Moriarty. We're going to get into that right now. Perhaps it has something to do, by the way, the deplatforming with Jessica Price. If you remember, this was the developer at the center of a wild kerfuffle last year, coming after the gaming community, being on the con, uh, the curation committee. So that might be an interesting uh, connection there. But nonetheless, there is an article that uh, PAX cancels controversial hosts live live podcast won't say why i don't believe chris reagan is controversial in any way i'm less familiar with colin moriarty's history i know he's had some spicy tweets in the past and he's been in games media in the past but chris as far as i know has always been above board has never really gotten himself in any kind of trouble but nonetheless let's see how kotaku covers us honestly ethically ethically and journalistically the Seattle Gaming Convention, PAX West, has canceled a planned live recording of Sacred Symbols Gaming Podcast, hosted by politically controversial commentators Colin Moriarty and Chris Reagan, uh, Moldenano. Of course, you have to use his full name because that's what these people do. This entire article basically reads like a smear piece to me. Um, Chris Reagan is not controversial at all. Uh, you're just saying that. Uh, just because you say something doesn't make it true. Kind of like how video games influence, well, anyway. That was set to take place on September 2nd. It hasn't been given a reason for the cancellation, which has caused a great deal of debate since the news. Moriarty announced the cancellation on his Twitter feed on July 30th, posting a screenshot from an email on the show's organizers. Apologies, but we can't cancel, blah, 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 blah. The panel was set to take place at the Hydra Theater, one of the bigger venues at the conference. PAX West has yet to release... It's official schedule for the event, so it's unclear if anything will end up taking that slot. I suspect we are pulled for political reasons, Moldenado, Moldenado told Kotaku in an email. By the way, Chris, why are you replying to them? You should know better than that. Uh, I should also point out that Colin Moriarty pointed out that uh, at no point did he have a conversation with Kotaku. Um, you can see I received no request for comment, at least anywhere where I'd actually seen it. And if you pull this up, he says... Not in his Twitter DMs, not on his Facebook, not on Patreon, all this kind of stuff um, at no and nowhere uh, did they actually reach out, you know, because they probably didn't want to until he had to publicly uh, call them out saying no email, no DM on Patreon, no DM on Facebook to either account on CLS. I'm literally looking through all my inboxes right now. Where exactly was this request for comment sent? I continue. Moriarty and uh, Moriarty and Moldenado are popular and divisive figures. Disagree on that part. Both alternating between gaming discussion and conservative political commentary. Uh, Chris Reagan is uh, definitely liberal. Uh, he is very liberal, I would say. Um, you know, you can hold... This is a whole thing with a lot of these video game journalists. They think that you can't hold a certain set of values, but also call up people in your own backyard. And that's what Chris does, um, for which he has over... And look at this. This is what's hilarious. You're going to bring up a video from 2016. 
That's what you're going to cite as a source, which might as well be a hundred years old in internet years. Um, in a 2016 video titled No Ain't No Rest for the Trigger, which has over 4 million views on YouTube, Moldonado mocks people for being an angry, angry at things like Halloween costumes and misgendering. Right. I don't disagree with him. Um, so, again, uh, part of a broader anti-brand uh, aimed at concern trolling people who call out things that I agree with, essentially, is what they write there. Um, up through 2017, Moriarty had been part of Kinda Funny, a gaming media company he co-founded. He left the company after making, then defending, a joke. Oh, no! Not a joke! Uh, he made on International Women's Day about women talking too much. Ha ha ha, you're not allowed to make jokes. Moriarty has a long, a long espoused political views that are somewhere between conservative and libertarian. Again, their political views aren't relevant unless Kotaku disagrees with you. Uh, the important thing from PAX and this video game panel that got canceled is simply why were they canceled and why are they being ignored after being agreed, being scheduled, advertising the convention, their fans buy tickets. They still are refusing to answer any emails. This is the problem, not what they believe. Uh, since leaving Kind of Funny, Moriad has done interviews on shows like Glenn Beck, Dave Rubin, and Joe Rogan. He also created a Patreon called Collins Last Stand, where content is often overtly political, uh, like a recent episode that criticized efforts to unionize the video game industry. Okay, so all of this reads like they just don't like Collins. So that's the only reason they're covering it, and they're using it uh, as an excuse to say, um, to espouse uh, their opinions about him. Um, talks about the president doesn't matter nevertheless exhibits a disdain for what people call political correctness and other progressive values uh, moriarty did not respond to kotaku's request for comment we know that they didn't bother replying to him in any way meaningful um well there had been criticism of the panel on social media after it was announced messages about it did not appear to go viral raising questions about what exactly caused pax west to reconsider the panel Moriarty, Moriarty had submitted the panel request of PAX West in May, and on July, July 11th, Moriarty announced the panel had been accepted and shared an email from the show with his usual, boiler, usual boilerplate language. Um, a few weeks later, PAX, PAX, West organized, PAX West organizer informed him that the panel was canceled. Moriarty has tweeted copies of other emails saying he had asked for explanation and requesting the organization reimburse, reimburse his podcast and fans for any expenses associated with the cancellation. By the way, I think this would be the absolute bare minimum PAX should do. He also shared what he said was a follow-up reply from PAX West, which stated, we pride ourselves on historically not shuffling or canceling panels last minute, but unfortunately we had to make this call after you had already verified. Neither PAX West nor the event producer Reed Pop responded to requests for comment from Kotaku. The absence of an explanation has, filled, has been filled with theories about why the podcast panel was canceled largely centering on Moriarty and Maldonado's politics, but also the behaviors of their fan bases. Oh, it's their fans. Okay, again, this is a panel about video games uh, at a large conference which celebrates video games. Um, and of course, none of this is important. Moriarty and Maldonado have also been accused of garnering fan bases with a propensity to be mean, who uh, occasionally target on Twitter in discussions on the podcast. Fan bases are inherently kind of obsessive. So I don't really believe our fan base is any more toxic than any other I've encountered, Maldonado told Kotaku. When asked about criticisms that his fan base can be toxic, nevertheless, in an example of kind of climate of critics of panel, we're discussing a low profile tweet celebrating the cancellation of the quote tweeted by Maldonado, has over 180,000 Twitter followers and quickly met with people calling the original poster mean words. Well, let's see. You celebrated. This is a per perpetuating, of course, the... Uh, the ridiculous mindset that just because you have a large following on social media, you aren't allowed to defend yourself. Um, the whole, you're not allowed to punch down. Meanwhile, Kotaku, a mega million, you know, mega corporation with millions of dollars in backing and hundreds of employees can essentially pick on Chris Reagan and Colin Moriarty, just single individuals, right? So by their own theory, by their own logic, they shouldn't be allowed to write articles around single persons because that would be, in their words, punching down. But Kotaku doesn't hold themselves to any standard, any morals, any journalistic integrity. It's just a website that pretends to be about video games, but really just wants to push their own ideologies. The controversy, and here's how you can really tell. The controversy 
to <clears throat> seems to have had a silver lining for the pair as Moriarty's Patreon has received hundreds of new paying subscribers since the news of the cancellation. So that's supposed to make it okay, Kotaku. Is that is that your point? Like because they have new Patreon backers, their deplatforming is supposed to be okay. You know their podcast about video games at a video games conference, which would have brought which definitely had sold tickets for PAX West, brought people into the doors, had people there who wanted to spend money, who were interested in other panels. The most important takeaway Kotaku has is, hey, well, I guess we don't know why, but at least they got a little bit more money. I doubt that amount of money will cancel out their travel expenses and their hotel or make up for the disappointment of their fan bases. But hey, who cares? We don't like what they have to say. Um, about things that we think are more important than video games. And of course, you can look at their comment section and see the exact type of rhetoric you'd expect. No one is owed a spot on anyone else's platform. If the PA guys didn't like their politics, and good for them if they don't, then they don't have to put them on stage. Uh, yeah, well, they already agreed to put them on stage and scheduled the time. So obviously, they didn't have a problem with them at that time. But eventually, you know, pulling the rug under, they look like absolute cowards. Pax pathetically hiding behind the idea that hopefully this whole thing will go away. If you or anyone you know has a ticket for Pax, you know, I think you should let them know that you don't stand for this if you don't, obviously. Um, I think that deplatforming a show about video games because you don't like a video they did in 2016 is peak cowardness. It is peak video games journalism in 2019, and it's disgusting to see happen again. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you real soon.